This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 4, this is the last and final twelfth section. Look upon the full extent of hatred, then let it go. Hi, David. I'm tired of ACIM. I have been studying it for over eight years. I have been going to course groups. I have been practicing both forgiveness and seeing the face of Christ in my brothers and sisters. I have more than a little willingness to be guided by the Holy Spirit to see my oneness with God. I feel that I have been at the point of the last step for a long time. I have been waiting for Jesus or somebody to take me across that little bridge into the garden of joy and inner peace promised by the Course. I know I cannot make it happen and that it has to be done for me. I have met over 100 Course students, including you but you are the only one whom I regard as enlightened. Now it seems to me that the course is a lottery game. Only one out of 100 or 1,000 or more ever wins the prize of Christ's final guidance into that garden. What kind of God is it that plays with us like this? Beloved one, Thanks for offering what is on your heart. We will lift it up together to the Holy Spirit. Frustration and anger are the ego's reactions to the God it made. A God that plays with humans and grants enlightenment to only a select few in history. If this were God, then God would be cruel instead of loving. And you and I would be human. Our reality is spirit and lives forever and ever and ever. The real God wills only perfect love and happiness and has nothing to do with dreams of games and numbers and groups. God is abstract, and to know God in spirit is to remember the abstract. But first, the forgiveness of illusions, seeing the false as false, is necessary. It takes great willingness to see that all events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful to see that all things work together for good. There is no amount of evidence that will convince a mind of what it does not want. Yet, since there is only one mind, the experience of love must be extended to be itself. Love is. One can seem to be aware of love or not aware of love. The latter is the illusion and must be forgiven or released. I am joined with you in this and we cannot fail to recognize God's plan for salvation, for only this is possible. This is what is meant by sayings like, with God all things are possible. If God is with us, who can be against us? I have devoted everything to sharing and extending the experience of enlightenment. 
and this is a natural expression of the love I feel within. What I am, I proclaim for everyone, for we are the same, not different. We have the same source. We are the same spirit. We are the same self. Enlightenment is a state of mind that looks upon the world from the inner experience of peace and sees no world apart from mind. I see our innocence and I rejoice that love is real. We are the same, one. The anger and frustration that seem to be surfacing in awareness for you need not be repressed. You must look upon the full extent of hatred before letting it go. In this sense, anger cannot be denied, but must instead be exposed before it can be released to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot take away what is protected from awareness and must wait until the anger is willingly offered up. This is the meaning of Would you rather be right or happy? Identity confusion is the root of all anger. And no self-image or concept will stand in the light of truth. I am joined with you in emptying the mind of all false idols, images and concepts. For God wills that light and love extend forever and ever in limitless and infinite being. This is truly natural. Holy are you, eternal, free and whole, at peace forever in the heart of God. At one point, Helen asked Jesus to take her fear away. Jesus told her, in essence, that he could not do that because that would be tampering with the most basic law of cause and effect. He could, however, help her with removing the limits placed on the mind that were producing the fear. That is what I have to say to you. Your mind is as powerful as my mind, for we share the same mind. You cannot wake yourself, and there is nobody outside your mind who can awaken you. We can, however, look together at the beliefs that produce the anger and frustration, that they may be exposed and released. And finally, it all comes down to desire. Truth will be restored to awareness by your desire as it was lost by your desire for something else. Desire calls forth witnesses. Here are some messages from the Course that witness to help and clarity I am pointing to 
with the words I have shared. You may complain that this course is not sufficiently specific for you to understand and use. Yet perhaps you have not done what it specifically advocates. This is not a course in the play of ideas, but in their practical application. Nothing could be more specific than to be told that if you ask, you will receive. The Holy Spirit will answer every specific problem as long as you believe that problems are specific. His answer is both many and one. As long as you believe that the one is many. You may be afraid of his specificity for fear of what you think it will demand of you. Yet only by asking will you learn that nothing of God demands anything of you. God gives. He does not take. When you refuse to ask, it is because you believe that asking is taking rather than sharing. Text chapter 11, section 8 Think not that happiness is ever found by following a road away from it. This makes no sense and cannot be the way. Do you, who seem to find this course to be too difficult to learn, let me repeat that to achieve a goal, you must proceed in its direction not away from it. And every road that leads the other way will not advance the purpose to be found. If this be difficult to understand, then is this course impossible to learn? But only then, for otherwise it is a simple teaching in the obvious. Text chapter 31, section 4 When you fail to comply with the requirements of this course, you have merely made a mistake. This calls for correction and for nothing else. To allow a mistake to continue is to make additional mistakes based on the first and reinforcing it. It is this process that must be laid aside, for it is but another way in which you would defend illusions against the truth. Workbook Lesson 95, Para 9 Salvation is no compromise of any kind. To compromise is to accept but part of what you want to take a little and give up the rest. Salvation gives up nothing. It is complete for everyone. Let the idea of compromise but enter and the awareness of salvation's purpose is lost because it is not recognized. It is denied where compromise has been accepted. For compromise is the belief salvation is impossible. It would maintain you can attack a little, love a little and know the difference. Thus it would teach a little of the little same can still be different. And yet the same remain intact as one. Does this make sense? Can it be understood? This course is easy 
just because it makes no compromise. Yet it seems difficult to choose and to those who still believe that compromise is possible. Text chapter 23, section 3 This course will be believed entirely or not at all, for it is wholly true or wholly false, and cannot be but partially believed. And you will either escape from misery entirely or not at all. Reason will tell you that there is no middle ground where you can pause uncertainly waiting to choose between the joy of heaven and the misery of hell. Until you choose heaven, you are in hell and misery. Text chapter 22, section 2 I am guided to encourage you to revisit the epilogue of the clarification of terms section of the course as well as the closing five paragraphs of the Song of Prayer. Like a gentle caress, these beautiful passages call upon the mind to leave behind its dreams of malice and receive the sweet embrace of everlasting love and perfect peace.